Okay, so the history of the animal kingdom goes back to what we believe is a protist ancestor. And one protist that we think resembles quite a bit what that protist ancestor might have looked like is the coanocyte, the collar cell from the sponge. And the, the collar cell of the sponge, this is a just a pretty simplified drawing, nucleus in purple, flagellum. And the ancestor of the animal kingdom was probably very similar, what we would call a coanoflagellate. So that's a unicellular protist. The coanocyte in the sponge is part of a multicellular animal body. But we believe that all animals evolved from protists similar to the coanoflagellate. So the rest of this lecture from chapter 27 has to do with deep time. And we've looked at this timeline before, and you'll remember that the scale here is very irregular and so each division mark is not equivalent to each other division mark, so you really have to pay attention to that. Of course, what they're calling the pre-Archean time is the pre cambrian time, um, including this also, the Archean and the Proterozoic. So all of this here is pre cambrian time. And I will circle this. So this is all pre cambrian here. That's what we're calling Precambrian. And it's called Precambrian because there's a big event, or a whole lot of events really, at the border between the Precambrian time and the Paleozoic era, which the very first period of the Paleozoic era is called the Cambrian period. So this is about somewhere between 500 and 540 million years ago. And the very last period of Precambrian time is called the Ediacaran period. And the Ediacaran period, when we find fossils from that period, we can find um, a fair number of different fossils. But when we look at the fossils in the layer of rock just above the Ediacaran period, which would be the fossils from the Cambrian period, there's just a huge increase in the diversity. And so we, we say that the Ediacaran period was the period right before the Cambrian explosion. And you'll remember the explosion is an explosion of diversity of species. In this picture on the right, they're showing the timeline in a spiral so it's almost like that piece of white paper that we used in lab if you just spiraled it so it could we could kind of squish it into a small amount of space what you'll notice is there's not very much diversity as you move i guess from far away down here at the bottom that would be all of the precambrian time and then eventually, though, you get right at the end of the Precambrian time and then right at the beginning of the Cambrian, um, oops, that's not, that's over here, you find the, um, the Cambrian explosion. So it's right, actually, they kind of covered it up. So I don't love this picture, but they're trying to show you that there's not that much diversity in the Precambrian time, and then you start seeing a lot more as you move up into the Paleozoic, even more in the Mesozoic, and even more in the Cenozoic. So we do find fossils in the Ediacaran rocks, and this is just some examples. You don't have to memorize these, but um, Cyclomedusa and Dickinsonia uh, are fossils they have found from that period but they tend to find those same kinds of fossils over and over again. That's 
And then this image shows what's happening with the oxygen content of the atmosphere. When the Earth first formed, it was basically a hot molten rock. And it's usually called the Hadean period or the Hadean <clears throat> um, period because if you think of Hades like hell, so hot molten rock, no water, no really very little oxygen in the atmosphere, and nothing could live. So for the first billion years of, of Earth's history, there was um, really no life on Earth as far as we can tell. And then the rock started to cool, and the oxygen—excuse me—the the the, um, the water that was in gas form was able to condense and start to be liquid form, and that's where you have the first appearance of single-celled life. So that's about 3.5 billion years ago, and single-celled life evolved for a while in the oceans, and Eventually, you had eukaryotes appear, and then you had some multicellular organisms appearing. But it's very little. And the oxygen, the change in oxygen, which you can really see it right here, and it falls right in that Edia Karen period where you go from having very low amount of oxygen to a very steep increase right here. That very first steep increase was very important in apparently allowing an increase in diversity of organisms. All right, and then you see some other changes that happen later as well. But this increase here kind of set things up for the Cambrian explosion, we think. So when you get to the Cambrian explosion, that marks the beginning of a new era, and it's because we find so many new fossils, new, new groups of animals, so a very rapid diversification. And it, this is going to still be in the ocean, because remember, things didn't move into, onto land. Even the first plants weren't on land until um, the Paleozoic. So, you have really right at first, you're, everything's in the ocean. You want to think of it that way. Now, the first arthropods are, um, some of the first arthropods are shown here. These are fossils, and these are called trilobites. And trilobites first appear, evolve um, as a distinct species at the beginning of the Paleozoic, and unfortunately, they all went extinct during the Permian extinction at the end of the Paleozoic. But they have a very um, kind of classic example of a segmented body plan, which other arthropods that did not go extinct at the Permian extinction um, were able to carry through, and, and modern arthropods have this very segmented body plan, maybe not as extensive as this but they have the segmented body plan as well. So the mass extinctions that you're really familiar with at this point, the two that you really need to know is the end Permian extinction, that marks the end of the Paleozoic era, and the end Cretaceous extinction, so end Permian and end Cretaceous, marks the end of the Mesozoic era. And then you have these other three others, and those are considered the five mass extinctions um, that we um, that have really changed very quickly the makeup of life forms on Earth. All right, so that's the end of this lecture and the end of um, chapter twenty-seven.